Hello, I hope you're doing well. Thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. So I want to tell you a short story before we jump right in. Okay, so you get this fancy new gadget. Maybe it's like this cool camera, or you get like some sweet new gaming system, something like that. You tear everything open, and then you come across this instruction manual, and you know, it's like written on this really weird, like newspapery kind of paper, and you try reading it, and it's then translated in like four different languages, and finally it's in your language, and it's kind of crappy, so you just throw it away, you know? And then every you just plug your thing in, everything seems to be working fine until you know maybe you don't you're like not understanding something. So Arduino also has an instruction manual manual, and luckily for us, it's not uh, crappy at all. In fact, it's really awesome. And it's called the Arduino Reference or the Arduino Documentation. And what this tutorial is going to talk about is this reference page and how you can use it. Specifically, we're going to talk about the anatomy of a reference page. We're going to talk about exactly what a reference page is. And then we are going to talk about why you should probably be using the reference page more than you are. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So what is the Arduino reference? Have you ever read a book and you come upon a word and you have no idea what it says? So what you probably do is you go to the internet, you do a search for the word and you get some type of online dictionary that gives you a description of the word. And usually what it's going to do is it's going to tell you more than just what the word means, but it's going to kind of say, hey, it can be used as a verb or an adjective or maybe both. It'll give you some examples of how the word is used so you kind of understand the word in context. And then it might even give you some etymology or something like that so you know where the word came from. So the Arduino reference is basically the same thing. It's kind of like a dictionary for all the structures, variables, and functions that you might use when you are programming a sketch. So it's going to tell you the parameters of functions, the description of a fun function. It'll give you the syntax, you know, like how it's supposed to be written. And then it even gives you a bunch of examples. So it's a lot kind of like a kind of like a dictionary. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look uh, very closely at uh, the Arduino reference page. So first off, there's two ways to get to the Arduino reference page. The first one is if you just go to the Arduino homepage and then click reference. And this will take you to what I call the reference index page. This has basically all of the individual entries uh, that you might be interested in when you're coding in our, with Arduino. The other way to do it is if you're offline. So if you are just in your Arduino IDE, you can go to Tool, I'm sorry, you can go to Help, Reference. And what this is going to do, it looks pretty similar. So here's what the uh, Arduino IDE brings you to. This is what the website brings you to. Well, what this is are just a bunch of stored HTML files that come with your Arduino IDE. So it's nice because if you're offline, now you can still get to all these reference pages. All these links still work, um, so you can get to the individual reference pages. All right, so we'll stick with the online reference page for now. So the first thing to note on this reference index page is that there's three columns. There's one for structure, one for variables, and one for functions. So these are going to cover all the structures. This column is going to cover all the variables. And this function is going to cover all the functions. So that's kind of like the first layer of organization in the Arduino reference. So each one of these words, each one of these little hyperlinked files takes you to an individual reference page. So let's go ahead and click on the pin mode function under the functions column here and this will take us to the individual reference page for pin mode. So what's nice about these individual reference pages is that they all follow a standard format or a relatively standard format. And so at the top you're always going to find the name of the function or the name of the entry that you're looking at and then it's got what I'm calling headers. So there's a description header, a syntax header, a parameters header, a returns header, an example header. Sometimes there's notes and then there's also a see also. So we're just going to talk about these headers real quick. The description is pretty straightforward. It's just going to, hey, this is what the function or the entry is about. It's going to usually use pretty plain language, but in some cases it will use some 
some acronyms and stuff like that that you might have to look up. So the syntax, the syntax is going to show you how to actually write the function. So here we've got pin mode. So if you're familiar with the pin mode function, it sets the mode of a pin. You know, are we going to use it as an input or output, something like that. So here we've got pin mode and open parenthesis, and then it's got the word pin, a comma followed by the word mode. So those are the two arguments that you need to send to pin mode in order for pin mode to work. It needs to know the pin number and then it needs to know what mode you want to send. So you don't actually put the word pin into the pin mode function or the word mode, but you put a number that represents a pin and then you would say you would send the, mo the mode, which would be you know like an input or an output. So that's how the syntax works. That's how you should be writing your code in your sketches. All right, so the parameters kind of builds off of the syntax because now what it does is it describes very clearly what each of those words is talking about, what, what those actually are. So pin, that says the number of the pin whose mode you wish to set. And mode, it gives you a couple different options for modes. And then notice these are hyperlinked. These will actually take you to uh, other reference pages inside the Arduino documentation. Okay, so parameters is going to tell you what a function would, um, would get passed. And then returns, this example, pin mode does not return anything, but we'll look at a function that does, but in this case it returns none. And then it gives you a nice uh, example. So the example description, it's gonna, this is going to be the closest you'll get to just seeing how do they implement the pin mode function here. So here you can say they, uh, they use it in void setup. They set an LED pin as an output here in this example. And then what's nice, you can, in the example header column here, there's this little get code function. You can click this, and what it's going to do is take you to a plain text HTML web page. And so you can just copy all that, and then you can paste it right into your Arduino IDE if you wanted to test it. So that's the purpose of that get code. All right, here we've got a note. This is a less common header on these reference pages, but usually it's just going to point out it's kind of some miscellaneous data usually. And then at the bottom there is a C also header. And the C also is going to list functions or other entries that it feels are similar to the to the entry that you're currently looking at. So right now we're looking at pin mode. So uh, the folks at Arduino are saying these are examples of what you might want to look at if you're looking at pin mode. So a digital writer, digital read. And then also sometimes it will refer you to a tutorial on the Arduino website, which is always good. Everybody likes tutorials. Okay, so that's kind of like, here's you know one reference page. That's basically what it looks like. So let's go ahead and take a look at a, another reference page. I'll take us back to the reference index page. And now we'll come down to, we've got these math functions. So notice how these are categorized too. So you've got math, trigonometry, random numbers. Uh, there's a lot of fun stuff on the right side. Um, so let's go ahead down to the math one. Let's look at square root. So here, square root, again, we've got these headings. You know, here's the title at the top, and then we have the description heading, the parameters. And then here it returns something. It says it returns a double, the numbers square root, and then it's got a C also. So when you pass a function something, um, something like square root, what would you expect to get back? Well, you would expect to get back the numbers square root. But some functions, like the pin mode one we looked at, they don't necessarily return any data. They just kind of do something for you, like setting the mode of a pin. So, you know, I wonder, well, what is a double? Well, hey, we can use the Arduino reference. So I'm going back to this index page. I know that a double is a data type, and data types are generally associated with variables, so I'm just going to come to this variable column. Okay, here's data types. Now let me look for double. Oh, there it is, double. Okay. Now I've got another individual reference page. Here's the title. I get the headers. And notice that the this data type reference page is a little more terse than the other one. It doesn't have all the headers, but it still has some useful information. It talks about, let's see, it says a double precision floating point number. So uh, basically what it says here is that it's pretty much the same as a float uh, when you're using it with the at mega based boards. It gives a little tip. Those can be handy. Uh, and then it also has a C also. So we can follow that C also, and this takes us to the float individual reference page. 
and describes that, gives an example, shows us some syntax, how you might use it, and then it gives us reference code, and then it's got C also. So I think you start to see how this is set up. So what is so special about the Arduino reference? Well, let me just be as straightforward as possible and say that the Arduino reference page will save you so much time, it's kind of sick. So what will happen, this happened to me about a million times, is I'm writing a program, things don't seem to be working out just right. And so I'm rewriting code, not understanding what's going on. And then finally I realize after I visit the reference page, I didn't really understand the structure, variable, or function that I was using. And so what it does in the long run is it saves you time by going to this reference page. And I will literally come to this reference page almost every single time I am writing a piece of code. Because you're not, you know, the idea isn't to memorize every function and all the arguments you have to pass it or understand, you know, like how many digits or how many bits a variable is going to hold. It's, it's not that at all. It's really knowing where you can look for that information. And the location of that is the wonderful Arduino reference page. So it's my favorite page on the Arduino website. It is truly the bee's knees, and I hope it, you make it your favorite web page also. Well, that pretty much sums it up. Thanks so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope it was helpful. You know, I understand that the tutorial is not quite as exciting as building, you know, robots that deliver a beer to you or, you know, blinking cool LEDs and that type of thing. But, you know, as far as usefulness goes and your ability to master the Arduino material, really your ability to kind of find answers and utilize this reference to the to the most of your ability is going to be huge so hey there that's it i can't wait to see you at the next one bye